Port Discovery's visual arts specialist. And today I'm gonna take you through a really, really quick tutorial of a few different ways that we can use tools to create different kinds of art. In today's lesson, we're gonna focus on two types of art, two-dimensional and three-dimensional art, and just show you a couple of different things that we can do. Now, before we get started, I want us to really think about tools. When you hear the word tools, what do you usually think of? Hmm. I usually think of things like a hammer, maybe a saw or a drill. But when we think about art, do we really associate it with tools? So what I want to do today is think about tools just as objects that are used to do a special purpose or maybe to make a task a little bit easier. And as we go through today's lesson, let's think about what tools we can use to help us create art. All right, I think that's enough talking. Should we get started? Come with me. All right, friends, so let's start by talking about two-dimensional art making and the different kinds of tools that we can use to create it. So when I say two-dimensional art making, I'm mainly referring to work that is created on a flat surface. So think about drawings on a piece of paper or paintings on canvas, anything like that. I'm sure a lot of you have some experience making two-dimensional art, so you're probably going to be really, really good at this. Now what I want to do today is just play around and experiment with just a few different kinds of tools that we can use to create two-dimensional art. These are definitely not the only things that you can use, so if you have anything else at home that you would like to try, go ahead and do it. Now, let's start with our simplest tool, one that you've probably all seen before. Does anybody recognize this? That's right, it's a pencil. So what do you usually use with a pencil? I use a pencil to draw lines. Sometimes I use a pencil to draw shapes. I can even use a pencil to draw my name. Let's see if I can draw it backwards for you guys. It's not gonna be the prettiest. But there we go. We can use a pencil to draw letters too. What I wanna do today is show you a slightly different way to use a pencil. So if you take your pencil and you put the tip a little bit flat, you can color in a whole lot of space at once. Now notice how these marks look really, really different than the really solid lines we get when we just use the point of the pencil. You can use a pencil in a whole bunch of different ways to create different kinds of art. So I'm gonna cover a really big space with my pencil right now. Awesome. Now this pencil doesn't have it, but what's usually on the back end of a pencil? That's right, an eraser. And what do we usually use an eraser to do? That's right, we usually use an eraser if we wanna get rid of our mistakes. But let's think about an eraser in a different way for a second. What if we could use an eraser just like a pencil as a way to create marks on our page? So now that I've got this really, really, really nice gray area out of graphite or what the tip of my pencil is made out of, I'm gonna try and draw into it with my eraser. So let's see, let's take the eraser and I'm just gonna try and draw a circle. Pretty cool, right? This is a really, really fun activity to do at home and a way to play with materials in all new ways. Now, I want to talk about one of my favorite art making materials. So I'm going to flip my page and I want to talk a little bit about paint and paint brushes. Now, paint brushes and paint are some great tools that are used by a whole bunch of different kinds of artists to create different marks. Paint brushes are just one tool that we use and they're probably the most common. So let's see, let's try starting with some yellow paint. I'm just gonna take my yellow and brush it along on my piece of paper. Now notice how this brush or this specific tool is a little bit bigger. So it makes some really, really wide marks. What if I wanted to make some smaller marks on my paper? Well, I would use a different tool. So let's go with a smaller paintbrush. And this time I'm gonna dip it in blue. Now notice when I use this, I create much thinner lines on my piece of paper. So paintbrushes are a great tool to use when you wanna have a little bit of control over what you're trying to draw or paint. Now, let's say I wanna get a little experimental. Um, I'm gonna start by covering my page with some red paint just a nice little area over here. 
Now, most of us are probably used to painting with paint brushes or maybe even our fingers. But what if I told you that you could also paint using cotton balls? What I'm gonna do is take this cotton ball and I'm gonna use it as a way to remove some of my red paint. So I'm just gonna squish, 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 squish all over. And notice how that lifts up some of the paint and creates some really beautiful marks and textures. Now I can use my cotton ball in the opposite way too. I can dip it into my paint and I can squish, 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 squish around to make all different kinds of marks on my page. We can do the same thing with our Q-tips. We can dip them into paint and use them to paint all around. Or what we could do is cover an area with some paint and use our Q-tips kind of like we did with our eraser and pencil. And we can use the Q-tip to remove some areas of the paint and draw into it. Now this is a really, really fun project to do and you could do it with a bunch of different materials. What else do you guys have at home? Do you have some paper towels maybe? What about some napkins? Or maybe you have some leaves or other fun things that you can use to draw with paint. Now a great thing to do with all of this stuff is to combine the different techniques that we've used. So let's see, let's go back and get another cotton ball and maybe this time what I'll do is I'll dip it in some blue paint. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub this blue paint cotton ball on top of my red. And that's gonna create a whole new series of marks. And it's also gonna to start to combine our colors. So I, when I paint, really like to work with the primary colors because the primary colors are the three colors that every other color is made out of. So let's see what my primary colors are. We've got red, we've got yellow, and we've got blue. Now, who knows what happens when we create, when we combine red and yellow? That's right, we get orange. And who knows what happens when we combine red and blue? Mm-hmm, purple. And what about yellow and blue? That's right, we get green. So by using all of these different tools to create our paintings, we can combine our colors to create all new ones and experiment with different kinds of mark making. All right, I think that's enough of two-dimensional art. Shall we move on? I'll see you guys in a second. Now that we've had some time to talk about two-dimensional art, let's think about some ways that we can make some three-dimensional art. Now again, just like with two-dimensional art, this is definitely not the only way to create 3D art. I'm just gonna show you one of the main ways that we can do it at home. So who knows what this is in front of me? That's right, this is clay. So what I'm using today is just a simple air dry clay that can be picked up or ordered online at any local arts and crafts store. So when we work with clay, what are one of the main tools that we usually use? There's a bunch of stuff over here, but I think there's something we use even more. That's right, our hands and our fingers. Our hands and our fingers are great ways to mold and shape clay the way we want it. Now, when I'm working with air dry clay, another tool that I like to have close to me is my spray bottle. That'll keep our clay nice and moist and easy to work with while we're mushing it around in our hands. So let's see, what can I use my hands and fingers to make? Ooh, I know. Maybe I'll rub, 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 rub them to get a ball of clay. Now let's see, what can we do with this ball? Maybe I wanna turn it into a nice little pinch pot. So what I'm gonna do is take my thumb, which is one of my best tools for working with clay, and I'm just gonna poke a hole in my clay. Then what I'm gonna do is take my fingers and use them almost like crab claws to just start to shape around. And eventually, I have this nice little pot. I can use it to plant flowers in, maybe I wanna use it to hold my jewelry, anything like that. Now, there are some more advanced tools that a lot of ceramicists, which is a fancy word for people who work with clay, like to use to create different kinds of marks in their clay. 
So I'm gonna show you one right now. This right here is called a needle tool. Now, it's called that because it looks just like a needle. It's a really thin piece of metal with a very pointy tip. This tool can be used to create different kinds of marks or lines in our clay, just like that. Now, I know this all looks kind of fancy, but most of these tools you can use from things, you can create yourself from things you have at home. For example, if you don't have a needle tool, why don't you just try using a sharpened pencil? You'll probably be able to get really similar marks. We also have some knife-like tools. Again, you could use a butter knife or anything that you have at home just like that to create a similar type of thing. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, you know, that's cool, but it sounds a little too intense. And that's okay. Let's say you want to do something that maybe isn't quite as messy, or maybe you just have a really little one at home who's not quite ready to play with clay. Another great three-dimensional art tool that we could use is something I bet you're all pretty familiar with, slime. Slime is a great thing to use to introduce yourself to three-dimensional artworks. Now, when we think about slime and creation, we usually associate it with STEM and science, right? And about all of the chemical processes that are used to create it. Now, while it is true that slime is a great tool to use to learn about science, it's also great for learning about art. While we watch our colors all mix together, we can start to think about the ways in which colors combine. And it's also a great visual tactile way to start to learn to work with our hands. All right, guys, I think I've given you a few tips now that you can go and get started. Let's wrap up. All right, guys, thank you so, 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 so much for joining me today. Hopefully this tutorial gave you a bunch of different ideas on how you can use tools to create different types of art. Now, I know it's a little tough because I can't see you all in person just quite yet, but I would so love to see all of the different things that you've been making at home. So don't forget to take a picture and to tag us at Port Discovery Children's Museum on Instagram or on Facebook so that we can see what you all made. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget to go outside and play.